Every Columbus Day, I try to steal some land from some Native Americans. I'll give it back, but I want to read a headline that says, Indian steals land from Indians? How the fuck did this happen? <laughs> Stay woke, man. America's crazy. <laughs> all racism is evil. It's not all evil. Some of it is bad, as in it doesn't hurt my feelings. I was out one night and some guy was like, man, go eat some curry. I was like, why wouldn't I do that? I was, <laughs> some of it is bad in that it hurts people and kills people, but that kind never afflicts white people. The kind that afflicts white people is hilarious. White, racism happens to white people all the time. They just don't know it. And it's very funny. White people, since most of you are here, let me ask this question. Have any of you ever gotten a bad coffee at Dunkin' Donuts? Because <laughs> I haven't. If you don't get that joke, which I don't think some of you do. Here in the Northeast, we have this thing called Dunkin' Donuts, which is like Starbucks, but for people that don't have time for pleasantries in the morning. No names given, no names taken. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts motto. In the Northeast, Dunkin' Donuts is run and operated by majority Indian people. And every Dunkin' Donuts, when a white person walks in, there's a little switch underneath the counter. They say, hey, there's a Steve here. He's gonna order a French vanilla, but give him a decaf hazelnut. <laughs> Gotta get them reparations one way or the other. <laughs> it's a weird time to be an Indian person, you know, because I'm like, tell all my friends that are like engineers and shit, like, yo, just keep a little profile. Because sooner or later, these people that think Mexicans stole their jobs are gonna find out the Indians stole the job. <laughs> I got a bunch of cousins on H-1B visas right now, like, yeah, just keep blaming the Mexicans. We'll be right here. It's hot in these streets. Weird time. Weird time in this country, you know? Feels like at any moment, black and white people are about to go to war, and Indians are gonna have to choose. I don't know what side to be on, quite frankly. It feels like mom and dad are getting divorced, you know? And dad's really cool, but mom's got all the stuff, so. <laughs> Maybe we'll see dad on the weekend, I don't. <laughs> Growing up, you know, as a brown person, you have like black thoughts, white thoughts, black experiences, white experiences, black thought of mine. I think Nicki Minaj is beautiful. Yes. Right? Yes. White thought of mine, I know I cannot handle that woman. I sort of gave up on white play a long time ago. You know, when that song TikTok came out by Kesha, that was a, that marked the end of my caring about white problems. That's a song by a 19 year old white woman who starts her first song ever with wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. <laughs> Tell me, what is it like to be a 19 year old white woman and wake up feeling like a 40 year old black man <laughs> worth half a billion dollars? I had a white friend tell me their name got misspelled at Starbucks. I was like, oh, where Philip, your name got misspelled? My name is Nimesh. <laughs> I once got Kumar. Has it happened to you? I swear to God. <laughs> so I don't mess with Starbucks no more. I walked into a Starbucks. I told a grown woman, hey, my name is Nimesh. She gave me a cup that said Kumar on it. <laughs> and then she was like, chai latte, right? I was like, how the hell did you know? I've embodied black stereotypes, I've embodied white stereotypes. Black stereotype, I love fried chicken. I eat it every day. White stereotype, I'm addicted to heroin. <laughs> <laughs> they, say, they say Indians are like the model minority, like we've made a lot of progress, because Indians do pretty well for themselves. I don't like that term, progress. Because they only started like Indian people in this country in 1965, which means we didn't make progress, we just missed the majority of racism. Do you understand? <laughs> Indians were just waiting until shit with black people calmed down. They're like, eh, we'll come over now. That's it. <laughs> From 1911 to 1920, 3,000 Indian people like me in this country, but they called us Caucasians because they already had Indians, the Columbus kind. And, and then from 1920 to 19. 65, they deported those 3,000 Indian people. Like, go back to Caucasia, we don't know what to do with you. And that just gave Indian people like 45 years to study and prepare for white people. 
and apparently what you guys really like is doctors and convenience stores. So now we know. That's all products. I'm Hindu, so you're all welcome for yoga. I don't know if you know that. Hindu is a yoga thing. I mean, yoga is a Hindu thing. That's the greatest accomplishment Hindus have achieved in this country. We've convinced young white women that yoga is a real thing. It's not a real thing. Here, uh, put on these tight pants and bend over. It's good for you. It's working, man. It's working. <laughs> yoga was invented when, some two, when two Indian dudes were hanging out in a corner. They saw some dog bent over, and they're like, you know who looked really good doing that? Becky. Let's get Becky to do that. <laughs> some Indians don't know how good we have it. I got a phone call the other day from a telemarketer in India. Deep Indian accent, like heavy. He's like, hello, can I speak to Nimesh Patel? This is Jeff. It's like, <laughs> it's like no, it's not, brother. <laughs> First of all, no dude named Jeff has ever pronounced Nimesh correctly. <laughs> Second of all, you're calling Nimesh Patel. Talk to me, brother. What's going on, man? How's your life? It's weird, man. It's like, we're pretty much white, I think, in that we can be anything in this country. Doctors, scientists, mathematicians, engineers, until one of our kids builds a clock. Uh, so. If you don't know that story, so a brown kid in Texas built a clock, and they suspended him, because they said it looked like a bomb. I saw that clock. It did look like a bomb. <laughs> kid deserved to be suspended. You can't build a clock and bring a screw, you brown idiot. Don't you know this is America? Don't you know what time it is? Keep your clock at home, man. <laughs> Build a volcano. But he met Obama. And got a full scholarship to MIT. Which makes me think it was a plan. <laughs> I think his dad was like, my son is a genius, but I can't afford to send him to college. We're gonna build a bomb clock. <laughs> We're gonna bring him to school and then ride that white guilt to the White House. And that's exactly what happened. Like, why did I study for the SATs? I could have just strapped a calculator to my chest and be like, surprise! <laughs> Science, let's go to school. <laughs> We're pretty much white, except when it comes to dating. Like, Indian dudes aren't sexualized. No. No, Indian, no woman gets ready. He's like, I'm gonna snag me a Sanjay this evening. That, <laughs> uh, that don't happen. It's fine. It's okay. My girlfriend's white, obviously. Yeah. I feel like there's a vibe of Indian dudes that have been gentrified, and I think I embody that vibe. I'm, so my girl's white. I get the white struggle a little bit. You know, it's mostly hangovers and avoiding carbs, from what I understand. <laughs> it don't seem that difficult. It's not for lack of interested in Indian women. It's just when I started out comedy as an open mic, I would try to date Indian women. Like, yeah, hey, I do comedy. And they would be like, oh, I'm a surgeon. This is not going to work out for you. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> it's fine, though. But having a white girlfriend is weird with Indian women around because they all think I'm a race traitor. Every Indian woman that sees me with my white girlfriend is like, I'm going to tell your mother. And, and every Indian guy is like, how'd you do it? <laughs> I told her I was Puerto Rican. She don't know, man. I've been studying Spanish for three years. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm racist against my own people. I take a lot of Ubers. Drunk. The other night, I was hammered, and I got into a black car because it was being driven by an Indian dude. I was like, hey, man, this is where I need to go. And he was like, who the hell are you? I was like, this is not an Uber. He was like, nope. I was like, my bad, dude. Indian dudes should not have black Toyota Camrys at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but then he drove me home. The shit was dope. Brotherhood, man. What up? <laughs> I'm the number one Google result if you Google Nimesh Patel. <laughs> and that's a huge accomplishment because there's so many Nimeshes in this country. There's so many Nimeshes in America that one time I had an ex-girlfriend that broke up with me and literally her next boyfriend was named Namish. That's more personal than it is funny. 
But I'm the number one Google result if you Google Nimesh Patel. And my mom Googled me the other day. She said, Nimesh, you're the number one Google result if you Google Nimesh Patel. I said, you're goddamn right. <laughs> and then she said, every other Nimesh Patel is a doctor. Where'd I go wrong? And she hung up the phone. <laughs> my dad is a cool dude. My dad, I found out recently, is the kind of guy that goes to the gym and follows around someone who's hired a personal trainer and just does those exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I pay for this? This guy's doing his sales. <laughs> Strange guy. I love that guy, he's so weird. It's a weird time being an Indian person. You don't feel like anyone cares about Indian people. I don't think they do. I was at those Oscars last year when there was that controversy that there were no black nominees, I went to that show. There were no Indian nominees. We didn't even get a hashtag. You'll never see a movie called 12 Years a Med Student. That'll never be a film. 18 Years a Liquor Store Cashier, that's a real struggle.